I just spent the whole afternoon cleaning my office and then let my daughter in here unattended for about two minutes. Hi everyone, welcome back to Linda Libra Lucra. Today is another episode of my skincare knowledge series and this is part of the few episodes that I did focusing on moisturizers and the ingredients that you need in your skincare. The first video on this topic was the difference between dry and dehydrated skin. Then I did a piece on humectants. Then I did a piece on emollients versus occlusives, the difference. And now as final part, I'm going to talk about silicones and the question whether they're really that bad, as some people will try to make you believe. I will link all the other videos up here and down in the description box. So you can watch the whole series before turning, coming back to this video because it will help. I'll do a quick recap. Our skin is built of different layers. The uppermost layer is the stratum corneum, which is where the skin has basically a barrier function, which keeps um, moisture that is drawn in by humectants inside and prevents transepidermal water loss. TEWL, which is moisture evaporating through the skin. And for that purpose, the skin needs the cells, the skin needs some emollients, and the skin needs some occlusives. And the emollients are divided into two different main groups, and these are the physiological lipids, like ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids, and the non-physiological lipids, like silicones. If you know a little bit about medicine, uh, you will know that physiological means naturally occurring in the body or similar to body functions. And this is why these ceramides and cholesterol and fatty acids are called physiological lipids, because they are lipids whose structure, chemical structure, is identical to the lipids your skin builds itself. Non-physiological lipids are different in structure like silicones. If you paint a silicone formula, the chemical formula, it looks different than a ceramide formula. We learned in the last video that emollients do fill the gaps in the lipid barrier of the skin. So if you have lost some lipids due to overexfoliation, smoking, sun exposure, wind, harsh weather, anything like that, you have little holes in your skin's barrier and that can lead to transepidermal water loss. So if you put an emollient-rich serum on, it will penetrate the skin, it will fill up the gaps and prevent transepidermal water loss, keeping your skin hydrated. Both physiological and non-physiological lipids will do that, but the physiological lipids like ceramides, cholesterol and fatty acids will penetrate deep into the skin and then will be transported upwards and fill the gaps in your barrier from the inside out. Silicones, on the other hand, due to the fact that they have a different chemical structure, don't penetrate as deeply, so they will work from outwards and fill the holes in the upper layer. This is, of course, not the only difference. If the physiological lipids had no other effect than filling these holes, then our skin would probably produce something different because almost everything in our bodies is multitasking. And this is the same with lipids, be they produced by your own skin or man-made and applied in uh, the in the form of cream, but with the same chemical structure. Like a ceramid in your own skin will have the same effect as ceramid that is made in a laboratory and comes onto your skin topically. Once it penetrates and it has filled the gaps, it has different other benefits for your skin. They do, for example, stimulate cell renewal, because if they are degraded in your skin, then they stimulate your skin to produce new cells. They regulate the pH level, and we all know that an intact acid mantle, an acidic pH on our skin, is very important for the skin to stay healthy. On top of that, they act as base glue for our skin. So if you're missing in physiological lipids, that may lead to large patches of dry skin flaking off because, yeah, the glue in between is missing. So they prevent larger scales of flaking skin. Silicones or non-physiological lipids have benefits as well, but they are different. They can't penetrate, so they can't have the same effect on the pH or stimulate cell renewal, anything like that, like the physiological lipids can, 
But silicones are very important, for example, when it comes to uh, SPF because they tend to stabilize some otherwise pretty unstable UVA filters. They make products more water resistant or rub resistant and they make products more lightweight because they can control viscosity. And not only do they make products feel more lightweight, they have a light diffusing effect. So these soft focus formulas in foundation that you use that makes your pores disappear and just make your face look like you have slept 10 hours straight and drank about five liters of water, this is usually a silicone based formula because they diffuse the light and thus make your face appear much smoother and plumper. Also very important for someone like me, they are non-comedogenic, so they usually don't trigger acne and in general are a very low risk for allergies. Of course, you can be allergic to silicone, you can be allergic to almost everything there is, but they are not something that triggers allergic reactions in many people and they don't have any endocrinal activity, which means that they don't act like hormones when absorbed into your body. A few of them like dimeticone have other benefits. Dimeticone is anti-inflammatory and is clinically proven to reduce redness in rosacea, rosacea patients. So bottom line, both have advantages and disadvantages. And I don't mind them in my products as long as they are mixed with beneficial ingredients like um, niacinamide or anything like that. In fact, I do prefer products that are formulated with silicones because they tend to feel less heavy and make me less oily and give me this poor, blurred, lightweight, radiant effect. As always, depending on your skin's needs, I think that you should look for a different mixture. If your skin's barrier is heavily disrupted and you need a lot of repairing, obviously physiological lipids will be more beneficial because they promote cell growth and they um, help balance the pH of your skin and all that. But if you're like me and your skin is actually pretty fine but, and you want creams but you don't want them to trigger acne, you don't want them to rub off the second you're sweating, you don't want your SPF to feel like a heavy cakey mass that's sitting on your face, they will basically be very hard to avoid silicones. And there's no reason why you should if you're, as I said, not one of the few persons that is allergic to silicones. And to all the people that claim that silicones do break them out, it's not the silicones. It's the fact that they make a product more water resistant. If you have a water resistant product on your face and you don't cleanse properly, and by properly I mean double cleanse with one really heavy duty like oil cleanser or something like that, not just a quick wipe with a micellar water or something like that, then of course it will break you out, but that's not the fault of the silicones, that's the fault of not cleansing properly. And that sums up the last of my videos in the, I don't know what to call it, moisturizer series. If you have a request for any other topics, please leave them in the comments below. As always, like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any further uploads. And I'm going to see you all very soon with another video. Bye!